All right, it's working, it's working. Okay, um, Mike, you see me? Yep, you're alive. I see you on Twitter right now. All right, so uh, uh, it's 8.42, it's uh, February 15th. I, I did try and do the, the 6.30 club, it just didn't work for me this morning. Um, not sure why. <laughs> Technology happens. You know, so I went back in back in the sauna for another few hundred reps and I, you know, went in the ice barrel three more times. <laughs> no kidding. I just did my charts and I got done a little earlier. So I figured, hey, let's see if we could try it again. So I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to log in if they want to. Um, my name is Scott Rudler. I'm the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Lab.com. Welcome to the 842 Club today. <laughs> anyway, let's see. I see Dunks coming on. I see Brian coming on. What up, buddy? Um, so I got to say this week was a very interesting week. You know, Tuesday you had the hot CPI, and it did seem like finally maybe that was an excuse for the market to go into some kind of consolidation, correction type phase, considering the size of the move that we had since um, <laughs> since November, on top of the move that we had since the prior October. So you're talking about a huge trend, and a lot of the trend, according to the media, was based off the fact that they'd be cutting rates five times. But meanwhile, you know, we're getting recessionary type of news but we're also getting hot news and it's a little bit of back and forth so what we have to do as traders is trade the action okay not have opinions because if you have an opinion because you listen to too many people you can get run over if the stock or the market says hey your opinion's wrong buddy that's what usually happens uh what up rock austin what up roger how you doing so remember we talked about the big you know earning not even earnings gaps those earnings gaps are still there by the way we'll get to those but we talked about the and the big gap that was left in the charts on the spies, the S&P cash, the Qs, and the IWMs. And I said, listen, if the sellers are going to have any kind of control, they protect those gaps so everyone sees the market wasn't strong enough to fill them, and then maybe there's more downside. That didn't happen. Instead of that happening, what happened was those gaps got filled yesterday. They pushed you know, the active bears back. So if you were rolling up shorts, you, know, you got it steamrolled if you said, hey, you know, on Tuesday, some leaders were decent, especially like in the video that went green and SMCI, Meta, hold the post earnings gap, Amazon was just fine, et cetera. You know, PS uh, gave you some clues that you couldn't just have short on the brain. So if you go here and you look at what I'm talking about, you know, there is a chart of the spies. I actually did this this morning, you know, with the alpha team because I do a morning call with them. It's not all about the 630 club, um, but we talked about how this is done. That this was this this was your hole, right? There was a hole in in the chart, a hole right here. This was your hole. Guess what? This hole got filled, so it showed the sellers basically did not have any power to contain it here. So if you were short, where <laughs> some they got pushed back and they got squeezed. And now, if you look, what's the spies doing? The spies uh, are at 511. Wow. Okay, filling the gap. This gap is gone. So this morning, I took away all the gaps. No more gaps. Okay, now this could just wind up being a new channel, right? A new channel to, to, to navigate where you have the low from Tuesday, you have 503, went in the gap. This was important, you know. So maybe today, you know, if you are long, and I'm on a bunch of names also, you trim it to strength, and we see if it holds 499 or it comes in. Tomorrow is the PPI, and the PPI will probably be a little bit more important based on what happened with the CPI. Yes, Netflix is strong today. That was one of my better uh, adjustments. Okay, I, I have options on Netflix and I have stock. What's important about Netflix, besides it being strong today, is that it showed you that one of these, you know, fang old school names could continue to make higher highs. So that type of trade still exists. Well, what do I mean? Well, you look at Netflix. Okay, remember, you know, I, I talked about the importance of gaps. Look at this gap in Netflix. Did this gap get filled? No. So if you were caught short and they tried to press you, press short and sell, tried to fill this, they couldn't. That shows you that there's strength. And then all of a sudden we went sideways for a while. And uh, some guys saw that there were a lot of options being bought. And I actually posted their tweet. Sometimes I post someone else's tweet if I think it's important. I like to share the love with everybody. This is a community. We share information. We try and make everyone calculated money so we could all you know, get paid monthly, quarterly, however you do it. But anyway, this gap stayed unfilled. And then yesterday, it took out this whole consolidation and went to 581. I got above 568. So if you're in options, congratulations. If you went after the stock yesterday, I bought some stock yesterday. And I'll tell you, I, I trimmed a little bit already and I'm still in it. Why? Because I always trim when a gap is in my favor. And right now, Netflix is up $4. 
to 583. So if you bought some at 568 or 572, you're up 10 points. You know, that's some cash flow, right? We like cash flow. But again, what's important here is seeing that a name that's as quality as Netflix could still make higher highs. And it's not an AI stock. It's not the video or SMCI. So anyways, that just shows you that that trade could continue. So what, was, what does that make me think about? It makes me think a little bit about Meta. Why? Because Meta had a huge gap up and it was huge. So it takes probably more time. And then on Tuesday, it held the eight day. It held 453 for some people who bought that dip. And now the question is, you know, how long is it going to be to get above 479 and 485 on its way to 500? Because Netflix showed that, hey, that, that trade could still maybe happen. So that's just how you connect the dots with your, with your thoughts. Amazon is also decent. Amazon actually went in that gap because every morning I think Jeff has a, a standing sell order to get rid of as many shares as he can now because he owns 9% or so of the company with his ex-wife. But I think he's almost done. He sold a lot of shares. Doesn't mean that he thinks Amazon is a bad company. It means that he has got too many shares. He's got to sell it when there's liquidity so he could give to all of his charities and run around with his, you know, with his new wife or whoever that is and, and have fun. And hopefully he's on his charity list because he's got a lot of money. Anyway, so Amazon... Still looks good to me. Amazon, um, this was where the gap was, right? 167.34. And then it came in there. So now the gap gets moved down. It's smaller, means it needs more time. It's a little less powerful. So now this doesn't mean anything anymore. Now this is your new point of reference. Because if it's going to fill more of the gap, it's got to get below 165.75. If it's not, that's what you're trading against. So anyway, um, we'll see if this has enough power. If Jeff is done selling, maybe. It could get above 171 and continue. So I'm trading around that. So those three look really good still in, you know, the Max the Max 7 is the Fab 4 now they're calling it because Tesla's been lagging. Apple's been really out of play. You know, if you look at Apple, look at the difference in Apple. Apple's just, you know, trending lower, out of play in this huge channel. You know, the news flow on Apple's is quiet. Their AI, you know, they seem like they're lagging or maybe they have something secret happening on my tell the world soon, you know, the iPhone has been slower, which it's true. You know, you can't keep having decelerating revenues and have a high PE historically, which is what Apple had. And I've lost some money trying to play with options. My last good trade in Apple was right here. I was buying 180. I trimmed some of that. I got stopped out of the rest right there. And now what? Doesn't seem like the market really cares when Apple's just out of play. The market might care if all of a sudden it doesn't hold the 200 day. Then maybe the market will care. I've just been kind of ignoring it because there's been so many better things to trade. Um, yeah, please, uh, please talk about NNOX and ARM and NVIDIA. Well, um, so there was some news out there that, you know, caught a lot of the people's attention that, you know, NVIDIA did a 13F, which I guess they have like an investment arm and they invested in a bunch of other little AI companies that are up a lot. So we'll see what happens there. Like some people like, hey, Red Dog, you know, would you trade something like a, a SOUN? Yeah, you know, it's up 70%. You look at the chart. This is kind of old news, I think. My friend Joe, he trades right there. He says he could have bought a bigger stake in SOU, and it wasn't a huge stake, which is true. But sometimes emotionally, it's like, hey, NVIDIA is buying them. Why shouldn't I buy them? So you have a gap up. This is $5-ish. So the way I would do it is see what the first 5, 15-minute low is against and, and buy it versus out. If it trades in there and all of a sudden goes from up a lot to red, it's not, it doesn't mean anything. If it up, it's up a lot, huge volume, you could buy it versus there. And who knows? Maybe you get a big day one. A lot of people are talking about how Blink had a really big day one. Okay, Blink, you know, it's been left for dead. It had a big blue one. They pre-announced their earnings, which were pretty good. They're now going to be maybe cash flow positive. And, and who knows? It's been left for dead. So decent day one. Let's, it, it can't give back half of yesterday. It's got to probably go from down a little to up and, and get there. So anyway, um, so it's something. That's just something to do. So let's go back to, like, the, you know, NVIDIA. Yeah, NVIDIA's got earnings next Wednesday. NVIDIA was a fantastic buy. On Tuesday, we went over this in the 6.30 club. I said, will NVIDIA hold the eight-day? Oh, look at that quinky dink. It's been holding the eight-day this entire time. Okay, so that was a buy. Or when it took back 7.12, that was a buy. And you could have traded it. You could have held it. did whatever you want to do. Anyway, um, NVIDIA now uh, is consolidating again prior to earnings next Wednesday. So the question I'm thinking about is, is, is there going to be one more trade here where you could be long verse 720 for it to get above 742, 746, you know, to make some cash flow. Or is it going to need to hang here, build a big upper level before earnings 
which is Wednesday, right? Wednesday of next week, where is the earnings? February 21st. SMCI has been absolutely nuts. SMCI, but it, at least it showed you that, right? On, on Tuesday, <laughs> when everything was making lows, you know, SMCI didn't even get below the prior low, and then it opened up at a new high, and now SMCI is at another new high. Some people are like, hey, Red Dog, <laughs> is it time to sell some premium? If you sell premium, I would never, ever, ever sell premium into an earnings play because those moves could be huge. But, you know, could you sell 1050 calls for tomorrow, which is, gives you another 120 points, which will probably be two, three bucks? You probably can. Could you short versus a level if it gives you a signal? If you're very speculative and you want to, you know, <laughs> if you want to do that, um, or you maybe even buy some puts. You buy some puts, buy, buy maybe the $900 puts and uh, do a put spread because they're going to be so damn expensive. You maybe buy the 900 puts and then you sell the 875. So if it does go from up 50 to, to red, you can make a lot of money in your puts and it's defined. Um, or you sell some premium higher, which is riskier, but you have so much room. You don't have to be as right to make money. Or you can just leave it alone. There are traders that have been blowing up shorting this thing. I have not, I've never shorted this once in my life, but I'm a bad short anyway. Anyway, so see if this holds up. Um, I still think AMD is a decent setup. It just had a big two-day move. Maybe it takes this out, but again, you have to deal with our earnings tomorrow. We're not, I'm not on next Wednesday for, um, for what's it called, for NVIDIA. Um, I have to say, ON ON made a lot of people a lot of money, which I'm very happy about. I love making people money. Um, you know, I talk about as a joke, you know, I do wear these, ah, hold on. I wear the on clouds, you know, and this actually, these are like the, you know, the high heel on clouds. Red Dog's only five, ten and a half. But I had like three or four pair on clouds I used to wear with, with jeans. And then I all of a sudden started seeing Chase and his friends wearing on clouds. I'm like, oh, there must be a lot of people wearing these sneakers. They're pretty cool. So anyway, um, then I was like, hey, look at the chart here. It's looking like it's going to get above the moving averages. So put it all together. Just call me Red Dog Lynch. No kidding. Um, and I bought the $30 calls for a buck and a quarter and the stock. And, you know, I, as of yesterday, I got out of, over half of the stock, half of the options. <laughs> I also <laughs> sent the play to you know who, which we're not going to talk about. And he made, you know, he said he put a million in and he made over a hundred grand good for him. I guess it might not be a lot of money for him considering, you know, made a million dollars on Michigan and uh, big 500 on the KC. But anyway, for trading, you know, where you have to get paid for February or for the first quarter, this was really good for a lot of people. So congratulations, make sure to take some off. Um, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. You know, Google, I haven't really been playing since earnings. It's been in the penalty box. Um, maybe it holds 143. I'm really not going to look at it. There's some news that Microsoft is going to come out with a search engine to compete with it. So, you know, people will sour there. Uh, buy puts. Yeah, I think Ryan says buy puts on SMCI. You probably I, buy a put spread or maybe some lotto puts or maybe go out till next Friday. They think the fever is going to break on Wednesday after NVIDIA, but I think there's a play here from today to tomorrow also. I go, Rumble, yeah, I, um, Rum, I've been in it for a while. Um, I bought it first, you know, right around here below 540, I added it at 650, and then I got really small as it, you know, got extended into the 830 area. Um, uh, I didn't buy some back, I bought some pre-market um, real fast because I saw what, you know, DWAC was doing. Uh, this was this is digital world. That's a, the smack. This the smack. <laughs> These were all smack, but the smack that uh, correlates to uh, Trump. And uh, you know, I saw this go up twelve. So I'm like, ooh, you know, maybe I need to buy more Rumble back because it's considered a conservative type of podcast show, um, meaning the conservatives. Listen, guys, I am not for the far left. I am not for the far right. I am in the middle, moderate. I try and have common sense. That's why, I, you know, I try and educate the kids. That, you know, if you're going to start gambling at age 12, 13, 14, or 15, it could become a problem in high school and college. And I think gambling amongst kids shouldn't happen. Okay. I've heard some stories of kids that want to commit suicide because they, they chase their bets and they lose, lost over 10 grand in, 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 you know, high school and they couldn't tell their parents. And, you know, they think it's cool to be gambling and then it turns into a sickness. But anyway, the stock market to me is not a gamble. It's, it's a place to build wealth over time as well as maybe you could even put a 529 to pay for college and a, a living if you have a process. But anyway, so with that said, what do I think about the small caps? Someone just asked me, well, the small caps also filled the gap. So I thought that was pretty impressive considering still, does, I don't know when they're going to cut rates, <laughs> but um, in here, they filled the gap and you know it held the, this held the 50 day and 
I think at some point it probably takes out this 203, 205. And a lot of people are looking at the XBI, which makes some sense. Someone's like, hey, Red Dog, do you think this is a cup and handle pattern? Yeah, it's kind of a cup and handle pattern where at some point I think the XBI takes out 93, 94. Um, you could be long verse 86. I talked about this on uh, on what's it called on on the wolf yesterday. The wolf uh, on the spaces. You could look at the weekly chart too to get a better picture. Sometimes weekly charts are good. Here, if you remember, you know, broke above the spot. It's been consolidating, consolidating where I, I still think this can get to 105. That's what I wrote in my 2024 report. But anyway, um, I think you know if you want if you're playing for it to get to 105, you might have to go out a few months and do a big call spread or. You could be in the XBI verse at 83. But anyway, it's 857. Um, so I'm glad I was able to get this back going. So this way we can go over a few things. Tomorrow's the PPI. It's going to be important, especially after the CPI. The gaps got filled in the S&P cash, the spies, the Qs, the IWM. So the short sellers had no power to contain it. So they pushed the shorts back. Doesn't mean we're going to be at all-time highs tomorrow, but it just means you have to look both ways. You know, you can't just be blindly shorting stuff, but also not everything is working from the long side. It's very specific. So look for your setups and not get stubborn. And I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And um, let's uh, yeah, let's put today together and uh, figure out how to go into tomorrow. And by the way, um, I think the stock market is closed on Monday. So uh, if you're planning a long weekend, have a good time and end on a good note. I'm actually going to Florida to visit my mom Sunday and Monday, which, you know, got to go visit your mom and dad as soon as you can because one day they're not here and then they wish you had that time back to go visit them. So, uh Cheers. Oh, no more ice coffee. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow we will be doing, me and Mikey will be doing our 2.30 week in review, week ahead, and, uh, you know, try and connect the dots and lock that between now and then. So make sure you're prepared and keep your process strong and have a routine you love so you can do it every day. You know, uh, I was in the ice barrel the other day and I came out of the sauna and I was sweating. And, and they say, you know, if you sweat a lot, you can get lucky. You know, if you're right, what does that mean? Yeah, I got to sweat a lot. And my meaning, if you work hard, chances are you're in a good situation to be prepared to execute on your X's and O's. Be prepared to execute on your X's and O's. Later, guys.